This is part two of the video I was just making that got stopped. I do need to upgrade my computer equipment and uh, some of these graphics. In any event, because of the farce, that's the word I'll use, because of the farce that was the scoring in the Oscar Valdez Robeson Conceso fight, and because, and I know I'm not sounding fair here, but this is the real world. Because you have the same trainer for Valdez that you have for Canelo, right? And because there are people out there, I'm among them, who believe the Billy Joe Saunders fight was much more competitive, who question not just the scoring in the first Golovkin-Canelo fight, but also the scoring in the Arislandi lara canelo fight. Hell, let's do one better. The scoring in the Austin-Trout-Canelo fight. And what I want people to do, if you question what I'm saying about valdez Conceição, is to look at the punch stat numbers. Right, folks? It's such a joke. You know, people should heckle Valdez. I'm serious about this. He claimed that all Conceição did was run. Right? How could a guy just run and outland you by so many punches, including power shots? How could your face look as marked up as it did after the fight and yet have you run in your mouth about how the other guy ran. Right? And so understand, I know boxing has different groups. They have casual fans. They have fans who are obsessed with the sport, fans who watch a lot of boxing matches. I'm just telling you that the sport can't allow itself to lose the boxing hardcore. Right? The fact that fans today know that Joe Lewis more than half a century ago, got robbed. The fact that I'm here talking about a fight involving Pernell Whitaker that's about 30 years old, and many of you remember that he got robbed in that Chavez fight. The fact that people have memories and we remember robberies, and the fact that you had just recently a brazen robbery I believe is going to put everyone on notice that the scoring has to be serious in the Canelo Caleb Plant fight. You know, before this Valdez fight, I thought, okay, Canelo, Las Vegas, do I need to know more? Canelo's going to enter the ring with a two round advantage. Now I'm not so sure. Let me just say, too, that whoever is going to announce the Canelo plant fight. They won't say it publicly, but privately, they're going to listen to the announcers from this farcical Valdez Conceso fight. And they're going to understand that we can't make the mistakes those announcers made. Right? You just can't. So I believe. Canelo versus Plant is not only going to roll out like the Conceso Valdez fight, where Plant is going to have the foot speed advantage. He's going to be moving around the ring. He's going to invite the crowd into the fight. He's going to let the crowd know this guy is too slow for me. This guy can't corner me. This guy can't stop my game. He's going to let the crowd know that. Now, the million-dollar question, and he is a great fighter, right? The reason I'm throwing so much smoke his way is because he is a great fighter. Who do we criticize? Folks, we criticize the LeBron Jameses, the Michael Jordans, the Tom Brady's of the world, the Manny Pacquiao's of the world, right? Those are the guys who we say, hey, you're too old. Right? Hey, you're too selfish. Right? Hey, you want to run the team. 
Right, so here's the challenge to Canelo, and it's a big moment in Canelo's career. Right, and I believe Canelo himself knows he didn't deserve the scoring that one judge gave him. I believe that judge called the Floyd Mayweather Canelo fight a draw. <laughs> wow, if there's ever a sport that has jokers scoring major fights, it's this one, isn't it? Right, I think Canelo understands that many people feel that that first Golovkin fight was a Golovkin win. Right, Canelo understands that there are folks out there who believe he's a great fighter. But who say, man, I, I look at the compu box numbers for that Austin Trout fight. The one where they were announcing the scorecards after every few rounds to the fans. And I can't understand <laughs> what fight the judges were watching. I believe Canelo, more than most, understands the stakes involved. Right? I believe Canelo's a closer. I believe Canelo understands that he needed the stoppage in the Billy Joe Saunders fight the way that fight unfolded. Because had that fight not included the knockdown and gone to the scorecards, there would have been a portion of the public who would have come forward and said, hey, Saunders on my scorecard won at least five rounds or this fight was razor close, or this fight was as close as the De La Hoya Pernell Whitaker fight was. So Canelo, and I believe this is the way boxing works, call me a conspiracy theorist. I don't care. We'll go wherever the facts lead us. Because the Valdez fight was so odorous, because the Valdez fight was such a hometown robbery. That's not even a location fight, folks, because in no location should Valdez have been awarded the decision. Because Canelo was in the crowd at the Valdez fight and saw that farce. Because boxing fans are just fed up with Joker judges scorecards. I believe Canelo understands that if he's going to be the undisputed super middleweight champion, if he is going to wear the crown at 168, he needs to do so with a decisive victory. Right? Canelo has delivered in the past. For me, that Saunders fight was up in the air until the KO. Then even I said, okay, well, well Canelo has this. <laughs> right? Saunders' quarter said, hey, hey, no more for our guy. Okay. Canelo has delivered in the past. He's going to have to deliver now. Boxing has a stench in the air. This Valdez thing's ridiculous. 50 years from now, some other Yahoo on YouTube is going to be talking about this Valdez fight as one of the bigger jokes in boxing history. Right? It's that bad. Well, Let's just say Canelo is going to have to clear the air. Because if we see the Valdez fight again in that Canelo fight, if Canelo doesn't do more than Valdez did, and if the judges score the fight the same way, right, giving Canelo the closest judge has uh, Valdez up by three rounds, if the same thing goes down, it's going to hurt Canelo's legacy just like it's hurt Valdez's legacy. Valdez, great fighter. Great fighter. Right? I thought he was going to lose the Burchelt fight. He delivered. Right? Great fighter. Unless he beats Kinsesa in a rematch like Joe Lewis beat Jersey Joe Walcott in a rematch. Many of us are not going to look at Valdez the same way. Here, if you're going to fight for the undisputed title at 168, you need to come in the front door, not the back door, helped by judges. 
right? Canelo needs to do far better than Valdez. I'm not sure if he can. Right? You're talking about a guy who has looked tired in some fights. Let's name one recent fight. The Kovalev fight. I thought Canelo clearly takes an entire round off later in that fight. Look at that fight more closely. Look at the scorecards. Kovalev is very much in that fight. Right? Kovalev is beating Canelo with movement, and let's face it, Kovalev does not move like Caleb Plant or like Robeson Curacao. Right? Kovalev is a slugger who meets up with Buddy McGirt and they say, here's how to beat Canelo. They come up with a game plan that involves movement. Folks, that's exactly the fight style of Caleb Plant. Many of you, by the way, have said, YouTube's interactive. You've said, hey, who has Khaled Plant fought? Right? Uskadege isn't exactly a household name. People hear Khaled Truax and they say, he's still fighting? I understand. I understand that Khaled Plant doesn't have the resume that Canelo has. I agree. Canelo at 168. Khaled Plant's division has fought the more meaningful names, right? Callum Smith is probably the toughest 168 pounder, right? And Billy Joe Saunders that either of these two guys have fought at 168. But what I want people to understand is boxing has a tradition where guys spar against the best. Right? We know that Caleb Plant has been in the ring with Errol Spence. We know that. All I'm saying to people is, look, don't assume that the best guys Caleb Plant has fought are the ones he fought publicly. Mike Tyson's former advisor Customato was also the advisor to Floyd Patterson, who had some rocky moments in his career. Right? Customato, according to Teddy Atlas and some others, would literally have fights in his setup in the Catskills that were not public fights. They didn't count on his fighter's record. But Customato would pay some contender to come in and have a fight against his guy, no doubt a contender with a fight style that his guy wasn't the best in dealing with to work out the kinks. Right? Caleb Plan is with PBC. I believe we can rest assured that Caleb Plant has been in the ring with some of the best. We know he's been in the ring with Errol Spence. Right? Understand, Khaled Plant was actually an impressive amateur. I believe he was an alternate to the Olympic team or something like that. In any event, you know, Khaled Plant can't get hurt by stuff that doesn't hit him. Right? If Plant is ready for Canelo's left hook. Canelo also has ring coverage on his straight right hand. Canelo also has episodic hand speed. By that, I've watched Canelo, I get the feeling sometimes he wants to throw a right hand. What he'll do is he'll throw a makeshift left and lean into a right hand that comes immediately after it so that it comes across as a very quick second punch. Right? Canelo's advanced. My concern with Canelo is he can't just lumber woodenly around the ring like he did against Rocky Fielding, right? Where he's just walking slowly across the ring to get to Fielding. He can't walk slowly on his front foot like he did against Callum Smith. Right? If he operates too slowly, the fight's going to be close on the scorecards, like it was in the Kovalev match 
late. And let's face it too, Kovalev has shown us that he had his own stamina problems in a few fights. The Alvarez fight comes to mind where Kovalev is cruising, then suddenly hits the canvas three times. So Canelo is going to have to be on his A game. He's going to have to cut off the ring. He's going to have to run up to Caleb Plant. Now I'm just telling people this. I know no one believes it. But Caleb Plant has a spectacular left hook. It's on display in the Mike Lee fight. And understand, Mike Lee was a bigger guy than Canelo. Right? Like Tito Ortiz, they had a ridiculous weight clause in the contract. He had to come down to fight Caleb Plant. He was the bigger man. He didn't have Plant's reflexes. He couldn't stop Plant's left hook from landing. It's harder to block a left hook when the other guy's feet are as good as Caleb Plant's feet are. In other words, Plant can just stop and pop. Right? Canelo's a bit more methodical with his left hook. Let me say this too. And Conceição got criticized for this on his telecast. Right? It's curious. Valdez would throw the left hook. Conceição would let him. Conceição would have it blocked. Right? Conceição had the common sense not to try to counter or anything like that. Not to move his right hand hand from his side when Valdez came in to throw the left hook. It was masterful. He caught the left hooks. He took the sting out of the punch. If Caleb Plant is prepared for Canelo's left hook, right, which might be the best in boxing, if he's prepared for Canelo's left hook, and if he moves and dances and jumps in with his own left hook, which is sudden, like Canelo's, he has a path to victory, folks. Yes, I'm talking about a guy who right now is going off at something like a plus 475. Right? I'm talking about a guy who the casinos are daring you to bet on. They're giving you such ridiculously long odds. And I'm talking about him in a fight that boxing is going to be on red alert for. Because no one's going to come forward. No promoter is going to come forward and say, hey, we know we had a problem with the scoring in the Valdez fight. We know the sport lost some credibility with the scoring in the Valdez fight. Right? No one's going to say that. They all know it. Right? I have no doubt that the judges are going to be advised in very strong language. We need proper scoring here. I have no doubt that on the telecast there's going to be a greater sensitivity to the effectiveness of Caleb Plant's movement than there was the effectiveness of the commentary on Conceição's movement. Right? There's going to be an awareness of the CompuBox numbers. People aren't going to be acting like the two guys are throwing the same volume of punches. Right? Simply put, Canelo, as great as he is, as much goodwill as he's built up, is going to have to do more than Oscar Valdez did to beat Caleb Plant. I think Plant has a real shot here, folks. I think Billy Joe Saunders, when he moved, was doing great. Why he decided to come in the pocket and lean over the pocket is anyone's guess. Right? I will agree with those of you who say and I'm one of them, that Caleb Plant spends too much energy, that he's not a guy who can effortlessly pace himself, that he moves so much that he gets tired, 
I thought the Uskatege fight. He was fortunate that the fight ended when it did. Had they said go another round, he would have been in trouble. Right? I'm not saying Khaled plants above criticism. But let's just say there is a distinct possibility that we get the first six rounds that we had in the Conceso fight. I'm just telling you, at the end of the sixth round, I had the challenger, Conceso, up five rounds to one. Four round gap. Right? There is a distinct possibility that Caleb Plant could make Canelo look slow, plotting, confused. That Caleb Plant could win the first half of the Canelo fight by two or more rounds, right? 4-2 would give him a two-round edge. Let's say Canelo does enter the ring with a two-round advantage. That would mean that Smith, excuse me, Plant, is in the fight going into the seventh round. That Plant then would have six rounds to make his case against a guy who, quite frankly, has his own stamina problems. That's how I see it. I think Plant's a live underdog, hedged to play with Canelo by stoppage. Let's just say this Valdez fight did not help boxing. Let's just say Valdez would help himself if he gives Conceição an immediate rematch. That's if Conceição wants to stick around to fight Valdez, who he's already beaten, and doesn't want to pivot to fight Lomachenko and some other people within range of the weight class. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video whether you agree with me or not. Thanks for stopping by.